Okay, and I signed off rather quickly last time. Sometimes that 10 minute clock creeps up on me and I don't want to go over because then I can't put it on YouTube, but here we go. And so far this game's been a lot of little things done right by our lines. And, it, and we've had a game where our first period was actually pretty good. Second period, team in white, the Little Falls team to start to pull away. Those of you who don't know anything about the MJHL, this team in blue, these are the bottom two teams in the league. The team in blue, Wildcats, has given up an unbelievable amount of goals this season. But uh, the game changed. Now, I'm going to make this comment that I'm not surprised that they settled back down this period because to be combative, and that fighting type confrontational thing takes a lot of energy and it saps it out of a team after a while. They're going to have to be real PO'd and there'd have to be some cheap shots spread out through the game for them to keep up that combative nature. Right, and this all goes back to some of that data I've been giving you guys. And, you know, Typically, in any given hockey game, you're going to have one period that's smooth sailing, few whistles, great flow. You have one period that's just a ton of whistles. Could be from goalie saves, could be from shooting the puck out of the play, could be because one team is icing it constantly. But you have whistle after whistle after whistle. Or it could be, in the case of this game, BS after BS after BS after BS. Uh, and then you have an, one period that's in between. Now, don't be alarmed when it comes to this. So, heading into this period, really, if you're taking this data to heart, you would say to yourself, well, we had smooth sailing, we had BS, we're going to have something in between, but be prepared for BS. Okay? I wouldn't go into the period saying, well, they did all their fighting and BS already, so they're not going to do anything this period. But I go into the period saying, I think Blue's going to come out and play. Okay, well, there's, there's obvious shifts last period where they did not come out to play. And like I said, the reason why they can't keep doing that is it saps so much energy out of them. And there's got to be cheap stuff or calls that are not being made that's going to have to keep that uh, level of animosity, that level of aggressiveness up. And so far, you know, really this white team's not going to do it. So. Just, just understand that, that that's how a game works. That's how most games work. There's always an exception to the rule. I understand that. But you need to understand what's happening in front of you and, and thinking of these big pictures all the time. Thinking on a higher level. Not just dealing with what's in front of you at the time, but always thinking, okay, here's what's going on, and here's why it's going on. And here's what might happen in the future. So you can help predict what is going to happen in the future. Hockey is a very predictable game, and I'm trying to point that out, that things happen, and you got to understand that. You, you've got to think that mentally, and, and be aware of those situations. Okay, so we've got 6-1. Just got a penalty on the blue. Okay, uh, 
once again, these linesmen are doing a great job. They're being super aware of everything. Working hard. That was a great handoff there. How can I hand it? Now go! 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 Hey, I know you're being super aware, but dude, you gotta go. If I'm an NHL supervisor in the building, I'm gonna be looking for your skating ability. Put it on display. Put it on display every time. You have no idea what may or may not happen in a game. You have no idea who's watching. I'm gonna tell a story about that in my Neil Missling. Uh, tell a story about that in my Neil Missling video eval. That you have no idea who's watching. You have no idea who can help you get to where you want to go. Hammer that, imprint it, put it in stone in your brain, so you understand that you need to bring it each and every single time. I continue to think in this third period, this is me, I'm out working every sound bitch on this whole ice. Hey, nobody's going to work harder than me. Nobody. Not a player, not a partner of mine, nobody. I'm going to bury everybody. There's nothing for me to save it for. Nothing. Good hustle there. Good job getting to the hot spots. Good job going with players on line changes, being a presence. All little stuff there. And I even like this what he's been doing all game. Good job skating hard back to your spot. 99% of the guys will not do that. Don't save it. Don't save your energy. Don't save your legs. They rip hard. So Cam, you're doing all that ripping hard on stoppages like that. Hey, okay? do it all the time on faceoffs as well. I don't know if it's just a couple game aberration or not, but I've been watching a couple. I watched two junior games over the weekend, and I would see. Some linesmen who would stand around after end zone face off to drop. Getting out of that whole Jay Share style. Don't know who Jay Shares is number 57. Go watch him work an NHL game. Guy rocks. You should too. You wanna watch a good uh, good WCHA example? Um, watch Matt Anderson. Watch uh, Matt Allwelling. Get out of there, Kevin. All right. Stop it. That's all right. Bam. In like flame, baby. Okay, we're at the nine-minute mark. Wrap it up by saying a lot of the little stuff done right. I think we do just a couple more little things even better, but the awareness is there. Head on a swivel. You cannot uh, substitute that for anything. I mean, whatever the game, having your head on that swivel. Three P's, four P's, five P's. Players, players, players. Then puck in position. It is so critical and I, and I hope anybody and everybody watching saw that that was definitely evident in this game. So, nice job there fellas. Both of you, uh, I'm going to put these games in reverse. So, I'm going to show the first part of the game now. Maybe we'll see a couple Dukers. Maybe not. Stay tuned. Bye bye.